Hey guys, Swift here with my Jaquan Brisker film review. I put a ton of work into this video, include staying up past 5 a.m. the last two nights, so please hit that like button for me. I want other fans to see it. Share it with your friends, share it with your mom, heck, share it with your dog. Let's get into it. Wow, I absolutely love this kid. I was not planning on doing his film review first, but I turned on the film and I just could not stop watching. He is an electric playmaker that is just truly exciting to watch on tape. I can't say enough about this kid, but I watched most of his 2021 film and some of his 2020 film. I did this because he played most of last year with a nagging shoulder injury that bothered him all year long. However, he was an absolute warrior, and you cannot tell he wasn't 100% on film. Until you see his 2020 film, and you're amazed that this kid was even more ferocious when fully healthy. He showed true warrior spirit and played awesome all season, even with the injury. What did Ryan Poles like most about this kid? Let's start out with the athleticism. He has elite athleticism, scoring a 9.13 on the RAS score. He is 6 foot 1, 205 pounds, and runs a 4440. I found quite a few scouts that shared the same opinion on Brisker that he has more upside than Kyle Hamilton and could very well end up being the best safety in this entire class. Before we get deep into my scouting report, I want to throw out a couple other notes about this kid. Along with a few other players polls drafted, Daquan was a member of Bruce Feldman's college football freaks list due to his freakish athleticism. He had zero penalties in his entire college career. Think about that for a second, guys. Zero penalties. Brisker also dedicates his game to his lost sibling. Knowing that is one of the hardest things anyone can ever deal with. I lost my little sister myself, and I dedicate everything I do to her, including this channel. It's not just the tape with Brisker. I love this kid, and I think he will be a personal favorite of mine. I can't wait to see him play, but let's get to the breakdown. Jaquan Brisker is a coach on the field and a natural leader. He is versatile and can line up all over the secondary. He's tough, and he will fight through injuries. He has a high football IQ with natural instincts, awareness, and ball tracking ability. He has great size and speed with long arms and great length. He hits like a linebacker with excellent ball tracking skills to boot. He has incredible discipline in gap defense and can attack downhill while maintaining gap integrity. The discipline and, where and awareness he showed at this was next level. He understands what offenses are doing and is a natural student of the game. He can read the quarterback's eyes and has elite closing burst when breaking on the ball. He is great at fighting through and shedding blockers, even against much bigger and stronger linemen. He understands leverage and technique. He can lock down tight ends and blow up sweeps, reverses, and screen plays. He is comfortable playing in the box and over top in center field. He takes great angles and has elite ability to close ground on ball carriers. He has very fluid hips and can also play slot corner and cover smaller, shiftier wideouts as well. He is amazing in zone coverage and he can break on the ball and deliver punishing hits to would-be receivers. He plays with unique discipline and awareness with special football traits. He has first round legit Pro Bowl upside. He is a big time player and we all know big time players make big time plays. He had five interceptions and 19 passes defended. Brisker is known for making plays in clutch moments. He sealed a win with a late interception versus Wisconsin and then followed it up with the next week with another game ceiling pass breakup. He should play immediately as a rookie. I think he will be our day one starter at strong safety and bring an immediate physical presence to the secondary as well as quality intangibles and leadership. 
Now, all that was great, but there has to be some weaknesses to his game, right? Yeah, you're right. However, finding weaknesses with Brisker is hard to do. He has a strong, sturdy frame, but I still worry about how he plays and how he throws his body around for big hits. He's also been burned by a few play-action fakes in his career. He does, however, have elite makeup speed, but he can improve on that part of his game. I think he can add a little bit of strength as well and needs to work on diagnosing plays at the NFL level. His only other area of concern were missed tackles. He would occasionally rely a bit too much on his raw athleticism and overrun a tackle or take a bad angle. This is rare though. He did miss 10 tackles last season, so it's something that will need to be cleaned up if he wants to develop into a Pro Bowl player. Nobody will say this kid can't tackle though. He is a playmaker all over the field. I like him a lot better at, at strong safety than I do free safety, which we will get into in just a second. But the only other area of weakness I found was he wasn't elite at playing center field. He is much better as the underneath zone safety attacking crossing routes, covering tight ends, and dominating the run game. Now let's get into one of the other things I wanted to touch on, and that is what this will mean for Eddie Jackson. My player comp for Brisker is a faster version of Adrian Amos with better ball skills. Yeah, seriously. Remember Eddie Jackson with Amos? One of the things fans have overlooked over the past couple of years when assessing Eddie Jackson is that he hasn't been able to play his natural position. Far too many times he's down in the box. When we had Amos, it allowed Ejax to roam free over the top and make plays as a center fielder. Adding Jaquan Brisker, will fix that. Jaquan is so natural in the box and playing the run game, he maintains his gaps and can make smart, disciplined attacks on the opposing team's running game. It can't be understated how important that is for Eddie Jackson and our secondary. Our entire secondary is going to be revamped, and I love how it looks on paper, and absolutely cannot wait until we get to see it in action. Brisker is an athletic freak, who plays with aggression and physicality. He is a tone setter and a playmaker that will help truly transform the Chicago secondary. Let's go over my overall grades. I am more accustomed to using a 1000 point scale from 0 to 10 with decimals, but to make it easier on you guys, I will be changing those to letter grades for each category. First, let's get into his measurables. I give him an A-, minus. he's 6 foot 1, 205 with 449 speed. I'd like to see a little more bulk, but he is a physical presence in the secondary and is a nice specimen at the safety position. Now his run defense. I give him an A+. He plays the run like Jamal Adams. He is relentless, aggressive, and disciplined with great technique. He will be a difference maker in this area. Next up is his pass coverage. I give him an A. Excellent in zone coverage, top notch in man coverage as well. His only weakness here is he can occasionally lock onto the QB's eyes and can lose track of someone in zone. But he makes up for it with elite acceleration and burst plus natural instincts and fill for a play. He might struggle early as he adjusts to NFL passing offenses, but he will be great in this area as well in time. Next up is playmaking. I give him an A plus again. He is a big time playmaker and he makes big time plays. Brisker fits that bill like a glove. He is a real playmaker and it should translate to the NFL level. Next up is his athleticism. I give him an A. He's a natural athlete, fluid movement skills, and incredible burst. He has great but not elite long speed, but he's a natural athlete. And then lastly is his fit. I give him an A plus. I didn't have safety as a huge need, but I have to admit that this defense is going to be completely different with him in the backfield. I am not sure there was anyone on the offensive side of the ball that would have changed our dynamic like that. That is one thing I came away from from this. Brisker is a difference maker. I loved George Pickens and Alex Pierce as much as anyone, but am I sure that either will be a difference maker on offense? I am not. I think they would have both been really fun to play with on Madden and would have been sexy choices to line up with Justin Fields. But when we talk about fit, I am talking about the impact on the team it has. 
I know fans think building around Fields means spending everything on offense. No, that's not really how it works. Tom Brady literally had an elite defense for every Super Bowl he won. It's a weird comparison, but did anyone watch the Super Bowl last year? The Rams and Bengals got there because they both had great defenses to pair with great offense. If Justin Fields takes the next step and Vellis Jones develops into a weapon, then the pick of Brisker is perfect in my opinion. There weren't any elite offensive linemen that would have changed the entire dynamic of our line. Maybe a guy who could have been a starter at right guard? Sure. But what would you rather have, a starting right guard that we might have gotten much later anyway, or a transcendent young player that can help stop opposing passing attacks and run games? Maybe I'm too much of an optimist, but after watching this kid's tape, I actually think he was a much smarter fit than George Pickens. Would Pickens have looked great in a Bears uniform? Yes. Would I have bought in a jersey? Yes. But pair his injury history with his immaturity and attitude issues, it makes this one a no-brainer in hindsight to me. I haven't went deep on Kyler Gordon yet, but I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't have minded trading down from that pick and grabbing a couple more picks. My mind will probably change after breaking down Kyler Gordon because he seems like a baller too. But as of today, my favorite player from this draft by far is Jaquan Brisker. I love what he brings to our team, and I think he is a perfect fit for our secondary. I think in a year or two, if Kyler Gordon also seen, turns out well, our secondary could be one of the best in the NFL. Think about it. Jalen Johnson is developing into a shutdown corner. Eddie Jackson could bounce back and have a big year playing center field again. Our nickel should be pretty good with either Tavon Young or Thomas Graham Jr. And then we have the dynamic Jaquan Brisker. I love it. This secondary has the potential to be best one we've seen in Chicago for a long time. I will say my initial reaction, I was a little underwhelmed. My fault, guys. I spent way too much time breaking down wide receivers and O-line that I never really went deep on defense. Next year, I will start earlier and do much better. The closer we get to the draft, I, I was starting to tell people we could go defense. It was a benefit of having so many wide receivers and O-line in this class. I didn't expect it to be secondary, but honestly today I'm a very happy man. I trust Poles and Cunningham to fix the line, and we have enough weapons for Justin to succeed this year. It's important to remember this roster should take a huge step forward, but this year is about growth. Next year we will have all of our picks back plus almost $200 million to spend in free agency. Uh, George Pickens, Alec Pierce, defense? I don't know. Oh! Oh, ho, ho, ho. yo, this kid, I love this kid. This kid is a baller. Oh, man. Fans are going to be freaking out. We just took two defensive backs. I love this kid, though. I don't know now if getting him and Gordon makes me like it more. Because our secondary is going to, look how happy, okay. And, and yeah, Luce is like, yeah, this defense about to be legit. Look at Poles. He's like, yeah, Poles strikes again. First round talent, pick 48. Look, that, that guy's a first round talent. That's all I'm going to say. Um, everyone knows Pierce has kind of been mocked around the third round. I don't think he goes in the third round. I'm, I'm smiling. I know Bears fans are going to be absolutely widening out right now. Um, we took two defensive backs. I love this kid. He's a first-round talent. Poles definitely just added a first-round guy at pick 48. And our secondary is going to be transformed. I I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of taken back. I, I, I was This whole time I've been wanting George Pickens or Alec Pierce. But thinking about it, when you look at this kid, this kid is a legit first-round talent. Pickens is a guy who has first-round skill, but he has an injury history, he has attitude concerns, a lot of other things going on. Pierce is, a lot of people are saying he's going to go third round. I think for sure he goes second round, but he's, 
He's almost first-round talent, but he's not quite there. He's not as good of a prospect as Jaquan Brisker. Oh. My only thing right now is I, I don't want to get on Bears Twitter. I know I know they're going to be acting wild. They're going to, it's going to, I already know what it's going to be like. It's going to be like, oh, well, it, Justin Fields is done. Oh, we're not building around offense. Oh, yeah, you know what? Bowles doesn't care about Fields. I don't even have to, I don't even have to click on Twitter yet. And I know what it's going to look like. This is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I love Jaquan Brisker. I'm going to, right off the bat, instant reaction. I love this kid. I think he's going to be a great pick. Of course, I'm going to have to break down the tape, but man oh man bears fans it's gonna be wild on twitter hope we get a wide receiver in the third Jalen tolbert fall i don't know somebody oh, we don't need to trade the pick uh, so i just saw it and i'm not i'm not happy about it i don't know if i want to look whenever you want to tell me i need to know so uh, wow. oh wow it's who? two defensive players no, it's Risker. Risker. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to jump. Like, I, I know you guys don't like it. Brisker's a dog. Like, <laughs> oh, God, is. God, yes. And a really gone. Yes, yes. Heavy defense. Savage, let's, go. Baby. let's go. Well, our wow. defense is going to be. You just got your Adrian Amo, Chicago. Thing about this, right? Do you remember all those games Ooh. last year with the blown coverages and you know I don't losing? Care. Yeah, I get that, but you know what I mean? Like that—that that had to be addressed. Hey guys, Swifty back here. We just watched Jordan's reaction from the Irish Bears show, and I didn't see it till last night. I was talking to Jordan on Twitter. He sent me the clip, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" I end up watching the whole show. Great show. I'll link it in the description below, but. He was the happiest guy I saw. His initial reaction to the Jaquan Brisker pick was amazing. Jordan, what's up, man? Introduce yourself again and tell me your initial thoughts on the pick. Thanks, Swifty. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, it's uh, Jordan T. Silvera. You can find me on Twitter. I Still, what are we here? May 1st. It is my favorite pick of the entire class. He is a dog. He is a guy that I had as my safety five only behind maybe safety four behind Lewis Seen, Dax Hill. I had he and Petrie um, who went in the same range at about that same type of player. I consider him an incredibly great fit for this scheme. A guy that I looked at and called Adrian Amos 2.0. Um, I know that that sounds like high praise, but the reality is Adrian Amos to me is even a little more limited than Jaquan Brisker. Adrian Amos is a guy that plays a little better down in the box, a little better in zone coverage. A lot of things that people don't aren't aware of or don't know about Jaquan Brisker is Jaquan Brisker is a former cornerback. Um, so he does an ex exceptional job at tracking the ball in air, playing man coverage better than Adrian Amos, is a willing tackler, is can play run support and ultimately spilling and filling in the run game and fitting the run. He comes up. He is a human heat-seeking missile. He drives his helmet and face mask into the pads of – the opposing running back of the receiver and tries to separate the ball from you. Oof. He attacks at the catch point. You can see him ultimately playing instinctively, driving on the ball with one of two intentions. I'm snagging that ball away from you for an interception, or I'm driving my body through yours to force a PBU. I call, and a lot of people don't know this, but Penn State is an incredibly prestigious program. They have a lot of different great players. Their defense is consistently stacked with athletes. The one thing that I want to give credit to Brisker too that a lot of people don't is when you think about that team with Odafe Owe and you have Jesse Lucchetta, Brandon Smith, all these players in the defensive front, when you look back at that secondary, it's he and it's Tariq Castro Fields. Yep. I noticed that myself when I was watching the film. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was watching Brisker, it was it, it, it was very clear on film that Brisker would usually stay on the quarterback's right side. He would stay on the, that side of the formation, and Castro would be one-on-one -on -one with the best receiver on the top side of the yep. uh, field. Shackling that guy. And he, he, he showed up on film almost as much as Brisker did. Not quite. He, was, he didn't move as round as well. He didn't play the run as well. But his length, I loved it. He was another guy that stood out on that tape. But, man, I love Brisker as well. What are uh, your thoughts on 
how he fits our team specifically. Well, and this is the thing, and it's a really nice transition there because the thing that he did so well at Penn State was being the traffic controller. And that is the thing that Eddie Jackson has had to do and add to his plate, which he can certainly do with dissecting coverages. But this is the whole point of bringing up that Tariq Castro Fields. I understand it's a safety in a corner. But when you consider what Eddie Jackson and Daquan Brisker can now build, bringing it back to that Adrian Amos time, where now Eddie Jackson has his Robin or his second man, his side, his wingman there to sit there and say, okay, I can trust you to handle the traffic, to fit the run, to help line guys up in position, to have the range as a former cornerback, to truly cover the deep half in the way that I'm sorry, but to Sean Gibson was not able to. Ha Ha Clinton Dix, for whatever reason, was not able to. Now you have a scrappy fighting dog there right next to Eddie that's going to sit there and go, okay, I got you. You want to play a little bit softer. You're more of a rangy guy. Don't want to get your nose in the dirt. No problem. I'm going to come in there and I'm going to separate the ball and I'm going to make sure you feel me. Every time you catch the ball, I'm driving through you. Exactly. He makes people pay, man. And it's it's great that you said that because I don't want people to think this is scripted. I literally just brought Jordan on before uh, I was done with this video. I had a little bit extra time, but I've said a couple of those same things you said right there in this video that has not you've obviously not seen yet. No, so that's awesome, man. It's it's going to be when you watch this tonight, it's going to be great because I've said some of those same points. And that's one of the things that I think fans I've heard some negative takes about Eddie Jackson. I even heard people saying, oh, well, this means Eddie Jackson can go now. Guys, I, I said it earlier in the video, but it's a common misconception. People don't realize that Eddie Jackson has been coming down into the box and playing out of position the last two years. And that's one of the biggest things or three years, now that now that we have a guy like this, it allows Eddie Jackson to go back to his natural position and roam over top and center field because he's not designed, he's not meant to come down to the box like that. And that's Brisker's game, man. He loves getting down and dirty there. And so what do you what do you think about what it's going to do for Eddie Jackson? Do you agree with that take or do you think? I, I do. I think that, you know, Eddie has certainly has a lot to prove and I don't want to sit there and give him any – any passes on the way that things have gone. But as Coach Flew said, this is a clean slate. And I think that the one thing I really want to hone in on, and it kind of goes to the Kyler Gordon pick, we don't have to talk about that too much. But when you look at what this secondary was last year, they couldn't stop a nosebleed at the most important times in games. And what you immediately see is that with Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker, you get two day one starters that are going to match up with a Christian Watson who's now in Green Bay, with a DJ Chark, with a Jamison Williams. You have these players in the secondary now that really fill it out and make it a dangerous unit where a guy like Eddie Jackson can truly go back to ball hawking and hunting in the backfield. And then you have that system that we're not playing that too high where you are minus one in the box in the run game. You need a strong safety like Brisker who's willing to come up and it strike fear and impose his will on runners and fitting the run and making sure that running backs and receivers understand if you decide to come here, there is going to be a business decision to be made because I'm going to hit you. And that's why people will love this kid. He's sometimes those short uh, slants and crossers just eat us up, especially in the cover two. When I actually had someone ask me that the other day, specifically about they remembered watching Lovey Smith in the cover too, and they're like, man, those slants and little passes eat us up. And I'm like, man, guys like Brisker, Kyler Gordon fits that bill as well, Jalen Johnson, those guys all lay the wood. They're going to uh, excel killing those routes. So I, I love the looks of our secondary, man. I, I'm, I'm hyped. I think I'm just as hyped as you are, man, and I can't wait to see him in action. It was awesome having you on, man. This video is going to be out really soon. Uh, do you have any final thoughts you want to get out there before we go? Just really overall excited about the draft class. I think that it's important to keep in mind that you can't fix it all in one year, but there is no doubt in my mind that the Chicago Bears today are significantly better than they were before the draft. I agree, man. I agree. It was awesome having you on, Jordan. Uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate having you on. Thanks, Swifty. Have a good one. Bear down. Appreciate you, man. Bear down. Yo, I appreciate everybody that's watching. You guys are why I do this channel. Please, please hit that like button for me. This video took a lot of work. And if you guys want me to keep doing these, 
bigger all 22 breakdowns, please hit that like button for me. I appreciate it. I'll be breaking down Kyler Gordon next. Then I'll be actually, I'll probably do Vellis Jones next. I haven't actually decided yet, but I'm going to be digging into it tonight. I love you guys. We'll decide. I'm a little indecisive. I'll turn on the tape and whichever guy I'm rolling with, that's the guy I'm going to get. Uh, if you guys want to see one before the other, let me know in the comments and that could sway my decision as well. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching and until next time, bear down.